Hello, everyone. Um, we are late by five minutes. Um, yeah, we'll try to rush it through. Um, right. So um, I will be talking about the OPAM. Um, what is it? Why do we need it? And I will walk you through the a small demo, um, which shows um, like very specific use case based um, about passing the logs. A little bit of mo about myself. I work at Cygnos. Um, I was an end user of Open Telemetry about four years ago and then I become a contributor and then maintainer. Now I'm mainly focused on the OPAMP and the Python SDK. Outside work, I do cycling um, and uh, I enjoy board games. Um, Colin on Twitter.com says, using anything else for gathering and shipping the telemetry data after using open telemetry collector just feels wrong. This reflects the growing sentiment among the people who adopt open telemetry collector. And yeah, it's a uh, great testimonial. Um, a big shout out to the everybody who's involved. There are some maintainers and approves here, um, and also everybody who is involved in making this happen. With the growing use of open telemetry collector as it gets more widely adopted, there's also a need for uh, ability to effectively use it and monitor and being able to control it. This is precisely where uh, OPAM comes into picture. Um, so let's jump into OPAM. So if I have to say in a one sentence about OPAM, it's a, a, a vendor neutral protocol for effectively managing large fleets of agents. There are mainly two things that um, you need to be familiar with. There's a the pro protocol and specification, and there's a reference implementation. The, um, the protocol has, uh, supports the, the functionality, like the protocol has the all things involved that uh, enables one to effectively manage the whole life cycle of the agent management. It supports the functionality of remote configuration of the agents. The, the term agent, when I say here, it does not specifically about the open telemetry collector as an agent, it's about anything. It could be your open telemetry SDK, it could be proprietary agent, it could be anything, as, as long as it um, supports the protocol. And it supports the uh, reporting the agent's own telemetry because it's important that you understand it and reporting the status such as version, um, the platform that it's running on, and et cetera. And coming to the security aspects of it, um, there's a connection management, um, credential management, auto upgrades. And most recently, uh, for anything outside of this main lifecycle management, there's a, a support for custom, custom messages for the ad hoc requirements. Uh, for the, you can check out the reference implementation of the client and server. Uh, and the link here, um, it also contains the generated protopops. So th this diagram shows a, t a very typical architecture of uh, how it would look in, um, in practice. Um, so you have, the, there's an agent and, uh, you know, client is running, uh, running alongside with the agent. Um, and it works with the server client sent, like the agent, it sends the data to OTLP receiver or in number of destinations. Um, the client uh, sends the data, like works with the, uh, sends the data to server on behalf of the agent. So uh, as you see here, th there's a communication between the, the bi-directional communication between the client and server. There are mainly two modes of transportations. Um, one is, WebSocket and uh, and there is HTTP. The client sends the uh, agent to server message to the uh, the server and server sends the server to agent message to the client. Let's look at the uh, like uh, take a look at the what the message contains. If you see in in detail, so the client uh, agent to server message has agent description that contains the what's the version of the agents that's running on the platform, etc. Um, there's an effective config uh, field uh, which reports the what's the current running effective config of, of, of the collector and then remote config status, uh, package status, um, etc. 
And the server agent contains the, uh, it encapsulates the number of things that server can offer to the client. So it has um, the, what it can offer, like remote config is there, connection settings is there, things that it can offer to the agent. And the, uh, there's also a command that it can send to the agent that the agent should perform. Yeah, let's look at the what 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 can be an OPAM client. Um, there, there's no specific, uh, there's no sp explicit way defined what can be an OPAM client. It can be anything. Um, it, it can be a separate process that's controlling the agent. It can be fully integrated into the agent code itself, or it can be a simple plugin. So the, the example where it can be a separate process, uh, this is how it looks like, where the client runs as a part of the supervisor process. Um, the, the agent is managed outside of the, like uh, the client is outside of the agent process and uses the system signals to work with the agent, like uh, restarting it and managing it. This is the where uh, your client is fully embedded into the agent code. So where you see the, it's the, the client is part of the agent code itself. So let's look at the agent, con uh, as a part of the agent to, the, the server to agent message, if you have seen we were offering remote config. So let's specifically look at the part of the message which offers the remote config. Here you, you can see um, the server can offer uh, a map of agent configs where it shows the, what's the name of the name of it and the, the body contents of the agent remote configuration. So in, 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 our, in, in, in conversations with the people who are using the open telemetry, um, the, the key things that they, uh, they mention that they're doing um, on a regular basis and then um, are like one is passing logs. There are logs that come out of from different systems from some containers, some are coming from the legacy systems. So to be able to convert them to the OTLP logs is one common thing that they do. And other thing that um, they're interested in is uh, the sampling rate. Uh, and the other problem that comes up very often is that, hey, there's a lot of data that I'm sending, but it's little to no use. How do I, how do I drop it? How do I sample it? So I will talk about the passing logs part, and I'll show the demo where um, we see the logs uh, coming from a container and then uh, apply the remote configuration and then get them uh, to a more structured data. So here, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it, this is visible, but here this shows the logs from uh, a Docker container. Um, if you notice, um, like if you see there are like number of parts to it, there's a log level, there's a location, there's a message, and then there's a, the number of uh, extra attributes associated with the log record. So this is a raw log record. This on its own won't be able to effectively fit into the OTLP model. So you, we need to perform some sort of parsing to map the log record from the a log, a log, a log level um, and message and the attribute, like the JSON stringified attributes into the attributes. So there are a number of passes in open telemetry uh, um, that, that, that um, helps with being able to effectively pass this log and convert them into structured OTLB logs. Yeah, let, let me um, show a demo, a little demo. So I hope this is visible. Um, if you look at this log line, um, it has the log level, it has the location, um, it has the message of the body, and it has the number of um, JSON stringified attributes. And this is, this is just a raw log. Um, there's nothing more there. But this is not very helpful on its own. Um, it, it, you won't be able to look at, um, you won't be able to do some aggregates on top of the attributes that you have here, or you won't be able to map the exact uh, log level to the severity text of the uh, hotel log model. So I will create a one dynamic pipeline where we will take this log record, we will do number of step-by-step -step process and get it to some um, structure format where 
this um, this JSON string is extracted to the attributes of the log record. This info is mapped to the severity text of the hotel log model. Let me go here. So here I will select the hot rod as the container logs that I'm interested in uh, parsing them. So, and if you if we look at this, um, you can see that there is uh, th there there are no attributes here, and the severity text is not mapped yet. So let's create this. First thing I will do, I will add a regex processor. Um, so we will. Um, a regex processor. I have created. Um, I have had a create a handmade regex. Uh, so I'll pass it. I'll copy paste it here, and I'll um, create this. Now, if we, if we, if I go here and do the simulation of the process. So here, what you just saw is, what would be the log record look like if it were to go through the regex processor? So now if I show what the log record looks like, you can see here this, the, now there are, um, you can see here there is a location as a part of the attributes, there's a log level as a part of the attributes, and there's an attributes JSON, and the stringified JSON of the uh, log record. Next, I will add another processor, the JSON, process, J JSON parser, so that we get the attributes out of the JSON stringified. So now I will add JSON processor. We'll pass it from And if we look at now, uh, we have two passes as a, as a part of the pipeline. And now if we look at what we will see, we will see more number of um, attributes as a part of the, the model. So now you can see that uh, along, with the, um, along with that, you, you, we now have service. We now have span ID. We now have trace ID as a part of the attributes of the log record. This is, while, while this is helpful, it would be good to have, good to get this span ID and trace ID mapped to the original log record of the span ID trace ID instead of them being part of the attributes. So I will go ahead and add another trace parser here. If I do the sim simulation of the processing again, um, and we wish it should be able to map those. If you see here, um, the, the trace ID, span ID from the log record are now mapped to the uh, trace ID and the span ID of the original log model. We now have the attributes them part of it. This looks good. Uh, we now have, we, we have, when we went through the step by step of uh, getting the raw, lo raw log model to to a, a shape where we the, the trace uh, and the span ID now are now part of the the hotel top level log records. I will go ahead and apply this change so that uh, what what we saw earlier logs were not uh, were very useful. Now if I go and apply this uh, configuration, let's see if it's applied or not. Yeah, it's now applied. I will go ahead and look at the explorer again after this change. Let's wait for a moment. Now, now, now let's look at the uh, lo hot rod logs of the container again. Now, if we look at it, um, so this this is no this this 
the, the logs are now uh, no longer are just the simple raw logs. Now they have the um, they have the trace ID, trace context uh, passed appropriately. They have the um, the location as a part of the attributes, the method as a part of the attributes, um, the log level. Now let's go ahead and apply the one more change where we map the log level to a log level to a severity text. Let's go ahead and apply one more processor. Severity parser and it, it's part of the attributes with the name log level. So I will give it let's apply apply it here and simulate it. It should now ma map the severity text as well. I'm um, sorry, give me a second. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what went wrong there, but yeah, so the idea is um, you, we can, um, uh, we can take the configuration, apply the configuration, get it, uh, get it applied dynamically and see the result in action. So this was about the, like, in, in, throughout this demo, what, you ha what we have done is we, we had some semi-structured logs. They were not really useful. We applied the, con we applied the some modified con configuration which had the regex parser, JSON parser, and trace context parser, uh, and now the logs are more helpful than they were before. This is about the demo. Um, let me go back to the slides again. All right, um, so while doing this, uh, there were a uh, number of challenges that came up uh, and some, um, one of them is misconfiguration. So like whenever you dynamically apply configuration to the collector, what would, how, how it should be that the configuration sh could contain errors that can, uh, that can lead to uh, telemetry not working properly. Uh, it, it could be that the error, the configuration itself is invalid. So they should be gracefully handled. Uh, other other thing is while like let's uh, while applying the remote configuration, the service, the open telemetry service must be restarted. So uh, it, it could be possible that for a number of reasons that they, they, um, they, there might be a data loss challenge uh, due to the the restarts. And the other thing is um, that. People, the, there's a there's a movement in term, um, terms of how people manage config. So there's more um, uh, inclination towards using Git as a source of truth and relying the Git um, as the um, m making the config as a part of the Git ops. So the 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 couple of solutions around the data loss are um, uh, Open Telemetry offers a persistent queue where uh, the data gets buffered through the disk. Um, uh, they, they it has file storage extension, which is very popular choice, um, where, it, where there, there's, it, it, it helps in these scenarios. And it also offers a, a Kafka receiver and exporter message bus option where one can write it to the Kafka topic uh, and rely on the Kafka semantics so that there's no data loss. So, to give us some um, some status on what's happening, um, um, the, there are a number of components in Open Telemetry uh, related to OPAM. Um, there's an extension. It's almost um, uh, like in fully developed. Uh, not fully developed. It's it's ready for the alpha stage. Um, there's a supervisor. It's it's actively being developed. Um, 
and appreciate any contributions from um, people here. Uh, there's, there's also operator bridge, which is experimental work that one can use. Yeah, thanks. We also have a observatory session on Thursday at 1300. Um, people can come there and give um, their feedback or ask any questions about the, specifically about the OPAM. Thanks everyone.